They are some of them um, posing for you. So I'm going to come through very quickly. Okay, there they are, the Rokotai Potty Club. And this is one of the sleepovers. And there they are all in their gym and all their total beauty. And they were beautiful, as a lot of Pacific youth in New Zealand are. And so when I said, why did they join? And the answers were all in the realm of it had become the norm for Pacific boys at this school to join Polly. It was almost a school tradition and a rite of passage today. And in most of their Polly clubs, there were more than 60, 70 kids who joined. Um, and it was a very large group to work with. Well, there's the teacher at the front, and she probably had a couple of other teachers. And it was open to all students from years 9 to 12. Um, this particular year, there was only one European student in the club, but other years, the last year, the year before, you know, the head boy had been in it, so there was a different composition of the club, but I'll just sort of whip along. Now, why did they join? I found three reasons why they joined, um, and I'll talk about them <coughs> briefly. One was the feelings of brotherhood, however this is defined, understandings of who I am, and it focused on people and relationships and what Pacific means. For some also, Polly was the only reason they came to school. And that was one of the key findings from the study, I think. And here are some of the words that they said. Polly is the only thing that keeps me coming to school. And then when I come to school, I do my schoolwork. I go to classes. Just for me, Polly is the big thing. It's the boys, the teachers, the brothers just being together. And another one, just a sense of belonging in the club. Just being able to be really part of something at school, part of the spirit and the adrenaline of being with your peers. It encourages me to come to school to do the right thing. A lot of us by the seventh form, it's hard to keep coming to school every day and on time. And I reckon it's the boys. They mean a lot to you. If you don't come to school, you don't see the boys. Answering your second question. And Cook Island and Māori. Now the thing for this group, the language was desirable, but not central to being a Samoan or a Cook Island Māori in New Zealand. Nor was the trip to the homeland. In fact, only four of this group had been back to Samoa or the Cook Islands. However, and this was the interesting thing, each student was able to recount quite meticulously the family stories and the, the journeys of their parents to New Zealand and the stories from back home. Uh, when you actually looked at it, comments indicate that you, these youth were actually being socialised into the Samoa or the Cook Island or the Pacific Way by the family members in New Zealand, mainly grannies who came to live with the family, but unfortunately many of them were passing away. And the other clear thing was that they were actually learning what it meant to be a Samoan in the Polynesian club. That had become the place where they actually constructed their identities of being Samoans or whatever in New Zealand. And reasons were given, my parents are always working, they don't have time, you know, those sorts of, of factors. And so the school became an even greater, um, a, a, an even greater hub of cultural learning or, or security, if you like. Um, yes, but two points about the sense of uh, belonging, which warrant further research. I've just said one. First, there is a likelihood that the Fatsar more these youth identify with is one being constructed in New Zealand, and that school Polynesian clubs are helping fashion that process. And second, and I'd have to test this again, but what came cl uh, clearly in most of the answers, you know how you read that the Samoans identify with a village? You know, if you ask me where I come from, I'll tell you my villages, those sorts of things, you know, mother, father. Um, but for these boys, some of them did not know their villages, but they called themselves Samoan. Um, and so there's a new sort of phenomena here. They are identifying with the nation of being Samoan rather than the village. Um, it's just something to look at. Okay, I'm skipping along. Brotherhood. The way the club organised built strong feelings of brotherhood working together. Every single boy you talked at in that school talked brotherhood, 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 and working together as brothers to build something much better or bigger than themselves. Um, I put in that picture because for, you probably can't see, but most of them have got their rugby gear on. And so on a Saturday, as the festival drew near, they would go and play rugby, then they'd all come back and do the Polynesian club. That was that whole sense of working together, discipline to create this, this thing which is greater than themselves. And they said those words. 
Everyone says brotherhood, that's a big word around here, but it's more than that, but I'm not sure how I discuss it, but it's part of me, precious. The most obvious answer is that we all like to do the performance at the end of the year, but at Rongatai, the common word is brotherhood, and I know it's used a lot. When we first started, everyone talked about it, so we all went along to see what it meant. We all had a basic idea, but over the years it's come to mean even more than this. Especially as we know our school years are coming to an end. And we know we probably won't be doing Polly Club or anything like that again. And uh, another one, this feeling of brotherhood actually extended into the school. And the school has managed to create that sort of a, a great culture in the last 25 years of brotherhood. Um, these feelings of being together carried over to their perceptions of the school. And so these were some of their words. To be part of Rongatai as a student but also to be part of the Samoan Rongatai, to be part of the Poly, if that makes sense. Our Poly brings a lot of different cultures to the country, but so do Māori. And then we always finish, we always finish our performance with the Rongatai Hapa. We are very proud of that. We don't belong to the Māori Club, and some of them Māori join us, but we love the Rongatai Hapa. That is us. And so there was that feeling of coming through of um, you know, integration and, and let's keep going. Relationships. Now within the Poly Club there were many levels of relationships and networks were nurtured between teachers and students, Pacific students, because remember they were all different Pacific ethnic groups, the wider Rongatai school community, year 9 students through to year 13 students, and um, old boys. One of the most remarkable thing about this when I used to go to their practices was the old boys would turn up to be part of this as well and they would teach and they would help the drums and you know there was this whole feeling of, of, of helping. They turned up regularly to help with the sleepovers, practices, show how we used to do it and also to the Pacific career days and community meetings and I was told that that was not unusual. I think Ken Cavesi is down in town now doing his rap. He comes to every career day to support. He's a Rongatai old boy. Ma'anolo, all those footballers, Julian Severe, they all come, policemen, wherever they are, they come and support their old school. How are we going for time? Ten more minutes. Okay. Um, relationships. Ooh, okay. I will talk about relationships. I've said that, haven't I? Okay, cultural knowledge and security, <coughs> that's right. Cultural knowledge was the core, the platform of everything the Poly Club did. That was the place where all the students shared their knowledge and debated their ideas about culture, about identity, and about changing times. And here are some of the comments. It's taught me who I am, a Samoan, an island boy. And it's, another one, it's taught me how to be proud of who I am and where I'm from and to showcase where I'm from. from. And then they even started to become what I would call experts in what was traditional and what was authentic. So they started arguing those sorts of things and bringing in their parents from home to sort of talk. And here's one comment. I think as long as you don't alter the traditional ways too much, it's good to add your own flavour style. But if you take it away from the actual dance type, it's not really Samoan. You can't call it Samoan anymore. So, you know, there are quite a few questions there about what is the real Samoan. Uh, for uh, Albert's information, the Samoan which is being taught there is Samoan College, Samoan. That's become the authentic, you know, for that particular club. Okay, when they participated in school events, that was great. The whole school would rally around them. But the Two Tanata Festival once a year was undoubtedly the highlight for the club and the whole Rongatai community as well. And these are some of the words they used to capture the empowering experience of the festival. And this was one girl <coughs> who dropped out and was doing all sorts of crazy things around Wellington. It's just the feeling you get on the night when you're performing. You don't get it anywhere else. It's a feeling of happiness, heaps of happiness. Just like nothing is going to go wrong in your whole life again, anywhere else. I have never had that feeling anywhere else. Every year, it's awesome. And there are those sorts of, of comments coming through. Leadership is the next thing I'll talk about very, very quickly. Um, and the, some of the boys, it was leadership was part of the club. The teachers tried to stand at the side, 
and the seniors took it. In fact, one of them described it this way. They said, it's just like a, a Samoan village. One student described the poly club as being run like a Samoan village. The senior boys take it. The teacher is there. She's the matai, ha, ha, ha. But the senior boys do the work, and the rest of us listen and watch and learn. And all the students I talked to saw this allocation of roles as the way things should be done. The sharing of responsibility, respect for the elders, and a way to leadership. One of the senior boys said, a sixth player, it helps me to step up to become a leader because the poly really needs leaders. It helps me stay committed to something, to stay and go to every practice. A good thing for me, I guess, because sometimes I don't want to. And another one said, it feels pretty good to be a leader, but it's hard as well, the pressure, trying to keep all the boys together, and at the same time trying to suss out the new items and the rules. We make up the movement, we get together during study periods or after school, and we think about the actions and songs and things we can add. So there was that sort of a leadership. And the students said, the younger students, we don't know, we don't mind, we know our turn will come. So we know to be patient and watch and learn. And our boys know how, and then they talked about their boys as school prefects, because since the poly club has come so strong, more of these boys